Do you ever wonder why your social media posts don't get as much engagement as other people's? You go on to Facebook and you scroll and you're like, wow, you know, everyone's getting engagement except for my posts. How come most of these are getting engagement? Or you go on Twitter, same thing, right? Or you go on to look at YouTube and like, wow, how come my videos uh, don't get as much likes or comments or views? You have to first understand the social media algorithms only show you the tip of the iceberg. Let me say that again. What you are seeing on Facebook when you log in and look at the newsfeed or Instagram or Twitter or LinkedIn or elsewhere, what you are seeing are the top, you know, 1% of the posts that have been posted recently. What you do not see are the other 99% of posts that don't get any engagement, just like many of your posts. So that is a first important understanding is to say that on average, most of your posts aren't going to get the kind of interaction that you hope for. And only occasionally, some of your posts will get above average interaction. And those, the ones that get above average interaction those get surfaced to more of your social media audience and it gets even more because the social media algorithm works in waves. Meaning when you first post something, they don't show it to everybody in your network. They only show it to a few people who, you know, of let's say there were a hundred people online uh, from your Facebook friends right now. When you post something, they only show it to like 10 of your Facebook friends, let's say. And they notice of those 10 who interacted with it, who engaged with it, liked it, comment, shared, et cetera. And if, if nobody comments or very few people out of the first wave of people who, who they show it to, if very few people engage, then they don't show it to the next wave and the next wave and the next wave. So many of your Facebook friends or your LinkedIn connections never see most of your posts. That's, what ha that's how it works. However, if they show it to the first wave of people that, are, are online and they, they, they just select some. Nobody knows how, it's a secret. They select people based on how much they interact with you, how much you interact with them, the type of things that those people tend to interact with, they will show it to. There's a lot of social media algorithmic stuff. But if the first wave interacts with your post, then the social media platform says, oh, this must be an interesting post. Let's show it to the next wave and the next wave and the next wave, et cetera. So that's why most of your social media posts don't get as much interaction as you'd like. Now, having said all that, should we therefore post things that we think will, will you know, try to get attention, et cetera? See, the problem with doing that is that Every time you do it, you give your power away. You give away, you step out of your authentic power if you're posting things because you think, gosh, this is going to get some interaction. Rather than, what's the alternative? The alternative is to post on social media because you have something that you genuinely feel needs to be expressed and that you think might be beneficial for the world. That's it. Whether it gets attention, whether it gets interactions, well, let's see what happens. But this is something I need to express. This is something that is a, um, a genuine exploration of something important to me. I'm not trying to get attention. I'm trying to explore something that's important to me, which I believe some people might benefit from as well. That's how we can post authentically. And, and before that, I should say, before you post on social, so, so here's, here's the, the main problem, right? The main problem is that so many people are not conscious when they post on social media that they are actually tying the interactions and the engagement to their self-worth. Now, I know a lot of you watching this are, are more conscious. That's why you're in my audience, right? You're more psychologically attuned. But, but even so, it's so easy for us to forget that, oh, that's right. When I post things, am I tying how many likes and comments? Am I tying that to my self-worth in a subconscious, not aware kind of way? A lot of times we do. 
that's why sometimes when you're posting on social media, you like go and check pretty quickly. Oh, did I get any likes? Oh, I got a like. Oh, good. Oh, gosh. No, I, I, that was okay. You know, it, anytime you do that, we are giving away our power saying, you know what, what is worthwhile as in my actions and as a person, what's worthwhile is if someone says I am worthwhile, if someone says that what I post is good. So let me give, so, so the, the overall authentic way of doing it is to be aware that that is always a pitfall. That is always a danger to tie what we post to our sense of well-being, essentially, okay? And to say, mm, I'm going to post because it is important that I say this for myself and for others who are going through something that I'm going through. It's important to share it, right? Okay, so let me give you some steps. That's kind of like a, a few steps for what I call social media sanity, okay? Social media sanity. Step one is an you know, authentic social media and social media sanity. Step one is have you turned off the notifications for likes and comments and shares for your, for your mobile device and for your computer desktop. You certainly shouldn't be, every time someone likes or comments or shares, some kind of visible thing comes through, then, then all day long, you are tying your sense of excitement, you know, at the least, maybe your sense of well-being, but your sense, certainly your sense of excitement, ooh, a new like, you know? So turn that stuff off of your mobile device for sure, okay? That's step one. Step two is that before you make a social media post, take a moment and reconnect with your source of deep and infinite worth. So what practice do you have for connecting to your source of deep and infinite worth? What I mean is you, of course, are worth infinity. It's not like if you get 10 likes, 100 likes, 1,000 likes on your post, somehow you are a better person or smarter or more talented or more, you know, whatever. No, it's just the, the, mo the sign of the moment. It just happens that enough people happen to see it and like it and whatever. No, it, it's not connected even to your talent and even to your, to your intelligence or your charisma or anything. No, it's not connected to any of that. You, as a human being, with all your cap capabilities and your personality and uh, your presence, is worth an infinite amount. Nobody can tell you what you are worth. That's the truth. So, and the other part of it is that within you is a deep and infinite well of creativity. Within you is an unlimited source of ideas, of charisma even, of presence, of energy. For the rest of your life, you're gonna create so many things. It's an infinite source within you. So because you are infinite in your worth and in your creativity, can you take a moment to connect with that, whatever practice you do, whether it's prayer, you know, meditation, um, breathing, I do my energy reboot practice, which you can Google energy reboot practice. And I think my article is towards the top there. So that's what I do before I come on to video like this uh, or before I write or before I publish any course or any, you know, even announce, announce a something for sale. I do my energy reboot practice first. So that's, that's a thing before you post to do your own energy reboot practice. And then after you've done that, now as you write or as you record, um, practice. You remember that when you are creating, you're not just trying to make people happy or educated or help people. Yeah, okay, certainly. I, I, I really think of, I've, I've said this before, I think of content as a ministry, right? But I think of the ministry as a natural byproduct of me showing up to authentically explore something that's important to me. Let me say that again. If I show up consistently to explore 
and practice expressing what something that's important to me, the byproduct is that it's going to be helpful to somebody out there. Even if they never click like or whatever, which is the truth. I don't know if you know, but uh, when I, you know, out of every 10 to 50 views of something, they, I might get one like, maybe, maybe not. But I, even if nobody clicks like, I know that it has made some impact if, even if it got one view, even if that person never commented or never said anything, it still made an impact. So it doesn't matter. That's the byproduct. The more important part is the more important part of content is the opportunity for you to practice genuinely expressing yourself. It's, it's practicing discovering your authentic voice. I don't literally mean your voice. It could be that, right? If you're speaking on video or on a podcast, but your, your voice in terms of how you think about things, how you express things. So, so, um, so step one is to connect with your source. Step two is to remember that as you create, you're practicing, exploring and expressing. Step three, go ahead and publish it, all right? And immediately go do something else. So once you click on post or publish, don't wait around and go, I wonder who's the first like, and don't check after five minutes. Go and do something else and forget about the fact that you just published something. Go and do something else, okay? The practice of ignoring engagement for a while will strengthen better boundaries and increase your authentic power because you know that, hey, you know what? I just explored and expressed myself and good. That's, that's what I'm here for to do. Go and do something else. And then, okay, next step is to check engagement once in a while. Don't do it after five minutes or 15 minutes or even an hour if you can stand it, okay? Check after a day or two or check after a week, right? And the purpose of checking for engagement isn't to go, oh, that person likes me. Therefore, I must be a, a more worthwhile person. No, no, that's the danger, right? It's like, oh, check, oh, that person likes me. Oh, that person thinks I'm cool. See, the problem with a lot of gurus, right? And I don't mean guru, but in, in, uh, there are good spiritual gurus and gurus can be good. But the problem with a lot of, maybe I'll just say egotistical teachers is that they've drunk the Kool-Aid of all the praise that they get. And something that I have to be aware of all the time. It's like, I, I, I'm, of course, I'm grateful for your praise and for your kindness and for your encouragement and for your appreciation. Of course, who, 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 doesn't, who doesn't enjoy that? But I have to be careful to go, oh, you know, I'm, that they are so kind. They are being so generous. That's how I think of it. I don't think of it as, that's right, I'm awesome. I think of it as, wow, they're, they're, so, they're such a generous person. Look at that generous person who says such nice things. That's it. That's how I think of it. You know, I think how great you are. I don't think how great I am, right? Um, now, the reason for us to check engagement like I said, isn't to think how great we are or that we're worthwhile. The reason to check engagement is to see, huh, compared to the engagement of my other posts. Yeah, so when I check engagement, I, I compare it to my other posts and go, huh, how come this one did better or worse, worse, meaning got less engagement? How come this one got more engagement or less engagement than this, these other posts that I did? Hmm, is there a pattern? So I check to see, is it the topic that they liked or didn't like? I mean, if, if it got less engagement, it's probably the topic or the approach to the topic or the format. I have another post on this for the five success factors for content. You can look that up. Um, but yeah, it, so when I check for engagement, I'm really looking, I'm really analyzing, hmm, how can I learn about this? to make content that's more relevant for people in the future. Now you might say, well, George, are, are we making relevant content or are we making con authentic content? It's not that, I, I do check for relevance, but it's not that I go, hmm, gosh, they like that. I'm gonna twist myself into the knot to do more like that next time. It's more like, okay, so next time I will explore this topic more, again, for my own, for my own purpose, for my own genuine expression and exploration. I will try to explore that more often because people seem to get helped by that too, great. So if it can be a combination, that's awesome, right? So, um, and if also, if it did well, if that post piece of, piece of content did well, then I will consider making it, uh, you know, making a, a Facebook ad, Instagram ad, something to make that piece of content go even farther to get, to have it seen by more people. So the whole thing, I see the whole journey as, as, as one of testing. 
It's not one of, ooh, am I worthwhile? Is, are people getting it? I don't even think that way. I just think, I just think, have I practiced exploring what's important to me? And then noticing, oh, people seem to find that helpful compared to that other thing. Got it. Next time I'll explore that kind of stuff more often. So I hope this is uh, beneficial to you. And if it isn't, that's okay too. <laughs> you know, um, Those of you who don't know who I am, I'm George Cow, authentic business coach. I love talking about how do we create a true livelihood, uh, create an income for ourselves by doing things that are deeply meaningful for us and that are genuinely helpful to others as well. So if you enjoyed this, you might like my other videos and uh, maybe I'll see you in another one. Thank you again for, for, for partaking of this. And I always am so grateful to see how kind you are in your comments. But again, something that I should also say, I've said this before, only like or comment on something if you genuinely do. Because if you, if you like or comment because you, you know, want to be nice to me or whatever, it screws up my algorithms. It screws up the data for me to compare different posts to see hmm, which one did they actually like more. So that's another thing. All right. I, I wish you well and I'll see you next time. Thank you.